25 after 9, thanks for being with us on Live at 9. The new head of Memphis Housing and Community Development has had to hit the ground at warp speed. Yeah, to say the least, Ashley Cash had to manage millions of dollars in federal COVID funding and help implement the mayor's new Accelerate Memphis program along with her colleague Joyce Cox. Ladies, welcome to Live at 9. Good to see you both this morning. Ashley, let's begin with you. You have really hit the ground running. What have been some of the challenges for you as we were saying, dealing with some of these federal dollars and of course to trying to make sure it reaches as many people as possible. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. And um, I'm, I'm so happy to be here and happy to be a part of the HCB team. Uh, a couple of the challenges uh, really is, you know, it's a, it's a good problem to have, but having so much, uh, so many funds coming into the city and just wanting to be good stewards of those funds, making sure that they get to the um, organizations that need them and also the people that actually need the support right now. We're really working with our emergency rental and utility assistance program. Uh, we received uh, $19 million initially. We're doing that program with the city and the county uh, administering it jointly. And so just trying to make sure people are able to stay in their homes with the eviction moratorium lifting and making sure that folks know how to apply and the access uh, is available. And so that's been um, not necessarily a challenge, but just something to keep our eye on and make sure that we are spending those funds accordingly, making sure people are getting the assistance that they need. And do you have any inside information, Ashley, on with the Delta strain and now the Lambda strain, which is said to be even worse in some ways, uh, identified in Shelby County? Any more federal money? No, for I, don't, I don't have issues? any insight there. That is um, no, I not, mean, not my forte. No, 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 uh, no, no. Ashley, I'm sorry. I mean, any insight about potentially more federal money specifically for housing? It affects a lot I of people understand. here, you know. Yes. Um, so, so what we can share is that uh, Treasury actually um, has awarded the city of Memphis 161 additional funds in ARPA um, dollars, which is the American Rescue Plan Act funding. And so the city now is working feverishly with city council and other divisions to determine how to use those funds, if there are gaps in um, certain types of programs that maybe weren't previously covered, um, that we can, uh, we can address with those funds, um, if there are gaps in general services that the city provides or um, just generally funds that have been lost. And so that's that's new. That's something that we're working on actively this week and, and last week. And so that's probably uh, the closest um, financial response to the new strain um, of, of COVID. Okay. And we also want to bring in Joyce as well. Joyce, uh, let's talk about the Accelerate Memphis uh, program because We've heard the mayor say many times, this is a game changer for many communities, uh, you know, throughout the city of Memphis. How do you see it? Well, I see it as an opportunity uh, to do bigger and better things for the citizens in, in, in Memphis. Uh, it's just an opportunity to do pro projects that we didn't originally have the funding for, but now we have it. So it's an exciting time in Memphis. And of course, it will accelerate a variety of neighborhoods. You're having an event as well um, next week um, <laughs> to celebrate neighborhoods. It, this is an in-person event and yes, COVID restrictions will be, you have to mask and that sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, but what is the point of it other than just to get people together and, and celebrate their own personal neighborhood? Is there a larger purpose? Yes, there is. It's to connect people. You know, uh, the challenges that we have in Memphis are not just germane to Memphis. They're all over the country. But some people have figured some of the challenges out. And it's to share information. It's for us to get to know one another, know your neighbor. Uh, our theme this year is overcoming obstacles together. And whatever the situation in the city is, we, we must do it. We got to do it together. Mm -hmm. And it's just an opportunity. Actually, this is the seventh year that we've done this event, and we're excited about it because it's going to be in the Liberty Bowl. And I, it, this is my spiel, my elevator speech. <laughs> we give our neighborhoods one table, two chairs, and four hours to celebrate their greatness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we always hear about problems. But let's talk about some good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, how neighborhoods have worked together, connected with one another. We're gonna have live entertainment. Uh, 
uh, children activities. And this year we are going to be giving out COVID uh, uh, vac vac vaccinations. Mm -hmm. So it's just an opportunity for us to connect. We are going to be socially distancing. Uh, the stage will be on the 50 yard line. That's my dream, my dream. <laughs> all right. Well, hopefully we'll all come together as I'm sure it will. And uh, we'll, we put the website up. People do need to wear a mask and practice yes, social distancing. Yes. Um, and you'll let us know if for some reason, God forbid, things get worse and it has to go virtual. We're sure. So let yes. us know if you have to make a yeah. change. Thank well, you we are very much. All right. Thank we appreciate you. you both being with us.